And I present imaging and specimen with dielectric heart failure and transplantation with Dr. So Jong Wook. This is the first case. Uh, since 23, this male patient diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, we cannot achieve those imaging, but that report described every septum was increased up to 80 millimeter, and 2010 echocardiography showed every septum is increased, but uh, relatively normal, and LV is slightly dilated, and LA is enlarged, and LV function is slightly decreased up to uh, 40%. This is his pedigree. This is proband patient. His mother died from dilated cardiomyopathy, and his aunt received heart transplantation and LVAD insertion. His elder brother and sister were also diagnosed with heart failure and had hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and we evaluated genetic, genetic analysis, this patient and his niece. He and his niece shared the same genetic mutation. We presumed his early stage of a cardiography through his niece. His niece is young and 29 years old. Uh, this is parastoral lung axis view. The septum is very increased and every function is preserved. Uh, in short axis view, every were globally slightly thickened. And in four chamber view, every function is, was normal. And uh, blue size plot, uh, GRS is preserved. However, uh, in septum, uh, strain is reduced. Uh, for 10 years, cardiomegaly worsened and ICD was inserted, inserted 2015. And in EKG, every voltage is increased, but for 10 years, every voltage is declined. Uh, this is last echocardiography before transplantation. Every septum was relatively normal thickness, and every function is slightly decreased. This is for chamber pew. Every ejection pressure was decreased to 30%, and mitral regurgitation to, to tethering was shown. And this in Doppler echocardiography, grade 1 diastrogus function was shown, and blue size plot. Uh, GRS was radius. Let's move talk to specimen. Thank you. Uh, this case was referred to pathology after transplantation. The clinical diagnosis at submission was DCMP. But uh, during this preparation of this con 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 conference, I, I could know that this was a HCMP patient, but functionally, phenotype now is DCMP. So as you know, as you have presented already, as a family history is definite and the, the genetic studies of uh, uh, variants of unknown significance, but still I, I think it's a genetically confirmed case of HCMP. But as you can see here, the septal wall is not hypertrophy as is also seen in the uh, echocardiography. So my task is to how I can find any evidence of HCMP in this specimen with DCMP. So I sectioned many times for this area where I, I could find the uh, micro, uh, micro disarray of myofibers and also scar, central scars in this hypertrophic area. And also I could see the uh, uh, same evidence of same movement at the, at the tip of this mitral anterior reflet, which was uh, very, very much thick, thickened, not uh, only on this area. So I suspect this is one evidence. And uh, histology, I will sh show you very soon, but there was some scar in this area. So my lesson learned from this case was that uh, when the HCMP progress to DCMP, the size of a scar do not increase. But wall of the uh, uh, myocardium is hypertrophied. And also the global uh, hypoplasia of the hyper. Uh, hy hypertrophy of myocardium is evident, but the base of this area is uh, not very evident. That, that's different from the uh, dilated cardiomyopathy. 
indirect cardiomyopathy, the myocardium is relatively thinner than expected, but still it's a hypertrophy and dilatation. So the, in DCMP cases, the uh, myocardial wall is not this, this thick, thin, but it's uh, still remain a significant thickness throughout the wall. So, uh, and, and we, I have another case of uh, a similar history of HCMP, but uh, burnout case. So this is also similar to uh, dilated cardiomyopathy, but in this case, uh, I can see, show you the definitive evidence of uh, central myocardial scar in this hypertrophied area, although the wall of the uh, thickness is regressed to, and the left ventricle outflow tract obstruction is relieved. So uh, those, those are findings I've learned. And let me go back to the slide, please. Uh, yeah, uh, as you can see, the, there are scar, the right upper corner, we, ha we have a uh, low power magnification of a hypertrophied area uh, between the RV outflow and left ventricular wall. So the central scar is evident, and also uh, by histologic examination of the rest of the myo left ventricular wall, I could see my individual myocyte hypertrophy and also some mimicking to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So my conclusion. Next slide, please. <laughs> is that this is a dilated LV with an almost normal thickness of LV or a thinning of left ventricle free wall, uh, but the base of the myocardium is still the remain the thickness, and the the weight of the heart is increased. That means is there is an hypertrophy, and uh, anterior septal wall thickness is regressed, and a multifocal scar is definitive, but not. Uh, bigger than the usual case, and no residual obstruction in subaortic outflow, and a few individual cells and with hypertrophic nuclei with, uh, with a little disorganized cytoplasm, I could get uh, some evidence from uh, th this case as a uh, burnout case of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Next slide, please. I reviewed the ca case of how is the uh, HCMP uh, going on after, as an end stage. So in this case, it was 17 years ago when the HCMP was diagnosed. So in the paper, the uh, four types of LV remodeling in end stage HCMP, uh, more than half is regressed and uh, regressed the septum and relieved the LV or the obstruction and dilated LV, which means that this is not different from the uh, dilated cardiomyopathy. And uh, rest of the Rest, uh, rest of 48% are still septal hypertrophy remaining, but the dilatation of LV is progress. So, um, so I could find, try to find the pathology as a, uh, a fibrosis pattern and myocardial muscle disorganization and uh, intramyocardial coronary arteries and so on to find any uh, remaining evidence of HCMP in those cases. So um, I r sincerely ask you surgeon to uh, inform me the history of the patient when he, he was a HCMP before he became of DCMP in this particular case. Let's talk about the case too. Uh, this is a female, 60, 66 years old. Her elder brother died during transplantation waiting. He diagnosed with hereditary ATTL amyloidosis. He experienced three times hospitalization on tapomidias. Cachexia and hyponatremia were persistent, so we inserted VA ECMO, but he died. Uh, in his EKG, a uh, pseudo infarct pattern shown and low voltage. In parastern long axis view, uh, glass ground sparkling pattern revealed in every septum, and every septum is, and every free wall was very thickened, and every function was very severely decreased, and er RV is globally hyperkinesia, and RV also second, and RV also very hyperkinesia. This is his 
uh, her pedigree, his elder brother died from hereditary amyloidosis, and he also diagnoses TTL amyloidosis. Uh, they all share the same TTL mutation. This is her EKG. Uh, this is pseudo infarct fat tension and limb low voltage and LBB pattern. So we inserted CRTD, but that did not respond very well. Uh, this is the last echocardiography before transplantation. And the LV roll and free roll is very thickened and grass ground sparkling pattern shown. And every function is very decreased. And RV, RV, RV free roll was very thick, also thickened. And the, in Doppler echocardiography, grade 2 diastrophic dysfunction was shown, and RV6 pressure was also decreased, increased. In Bruce Eyes plot, its cherry spot was shown is compatible with cardiac amyloidosis. Let's talk as specimen. So heart is uh, uh, very big, and uh, if you uh, uh, examine this specimen, you will be very uh, frightened to see uh, make, um, woody, wooden, wood-like uh, consistency, very hard. So it, it's very much uh, expected how it is a, a resistance for dilatation in this patient. So uh, macroscopic finding is very much compatible with amyloid doses, and the, there is no uh, issue for, for the diagnosis of amyloidosis in this case. Uh, next slide, please. Slide back, please. Oh, previous, okay, uh, previous. All right. Uh, this is the uh, microscopic view of the specimen showing marked thickening. And as you can see, uh, the uh, histologic view of the right side, the amyloid P component is the uh, most easiest way to uh, diagnose amyloidosis, regardless of the type of uh, amyloidosis. So it's more uh, infiltrated in the endocardial side uh, of ventricular wall uh, compared to the epicardial side. And then, next slide, please. So uh, here is the uh, hist detailed histology showing that the uh, amyloid deposit is in the, in the, in the sarcolemma. That means the, it surrounds the individual myocytes so that the myocyte uh, cannot uh, respond to contractile uh, process and the, uh, it, it, the myocyte will disappear soon after uh, they, they are encircled by amyloid deposit. The problem now has that he has a history of a TTR genetic mutation, but uh, the immunohistochemistry on TTR was negative. Uh, although we tried four times, two times in, in our institution and two times in Samsung Medical Center. So uh, it, it was a uh, uh, well, it was challenging how we can diagnose this TTR type in these negative TTR cases. And also this was um, uh, lambda was positive, weakly positive uh, in these cases. So uh, we were, we were uh, chaotic how we can uh, deal with this kind of immunological data to uh, determine whether it is a TTR type uh, as a candidate of liver transplantation or it's a, a type of lambda type uh, which is a candidate for uh, plasma cell uh, dyscrasia treatment. So, so uh, we know that this has a family history and genetic study of uh, TTR types. So, uh, we 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 are uh, we searched for uh, more information. Next slide, please. So. The genotype of hereditary TTR amyloidosis is uh, there are more than 130 genotypes, which is a very uh, wide range of different uh, uh, phenotypes of TTR amyloidosis. And among them, 100 genotype, more than 100 genotypes show cardiac involvement. And also in this particular case, the uh, genotype was VAL142, uh, VAL and alanine is, uh, is a, a kind of rare variant, which was uh, first reported in 1999 from uh, a Scandinavian family. And then the first Asian case was in Hong Kong in 2018 cases. 
So it's uh, in maybe the second Asian case uh, of this this specific type. So uh, and I I checked those two papers that they don't show uh, the data on TTR immunohistochemistry. So maybe they are uh, negative or they are missing or they are incomplete study, but uh, still there are a certain group of uh, TTR amyloidosis was negative for current TTR antibody. That means if you use a uh, new antibody, we, we can uh, find the, the TTR positive in these cases. So uh, immunohistochemistry is just depending on how we uh, make the antibody for this test. So negative TTR in this specific type of variant uh, is uh, maybe explainable or it has to be reported as a, a possibility of a TTR type, although it, it is negative on TTR immunohistochemistry. And also uh, lambda positive, weak positive, maybe false positive, but there are uh, other some cases that uh, plasma cell dyscrasia uh, coexist with TTR amyloidosis. And so it, it is still uh, challenging to find any further evidence of uh, plasma cell change in this particular case. If there is a negative, uh, the, we can say it is a false positive, but uh, we may uh, follow up uh, whether they are uh, the possibility of. Uh, and, and also, uh, because the TTR type, the most common uh, therapeutic uh, Challenge is uh, liver transplantation, so I don't know where, whether you you will go for the and so on. Thank you.